Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. We are reading from the book The Path of Perfection by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada. Let's continue with Chapter 3 Learning How to See God. Bandhur Atmana Stasya Yenatmaiva Atmana Jita Anatmana Stu Shatru Tve Vartitatmaiva Shatruvat. For him who has con- conquered the mind, the mind is the best of friends. But for one who has failed to do so, his very mind will be the greatest enemy. Bhagavad Gita 6.6 The purpose of the yoga system is to make the mind into a friend instead of an enemy. In the material contact, the mind is in a kind of drunken condition, as stated in Chaitanya Charitamrit Madhya 20.117. Krishna Bhuli Sei Jiva Anadi Bahir Mukha Atta Eva Maya Tare Deya Samsara Dukha Forgetting Krishna, the living entity, has been attracted by the law's external feature from the time immemorial. Therefore, the illusory energy, Maya, gives him all kinds of misery. In, the, in his material existence. The living entity is constitutionally spirit soul, part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. As soon as the mind is contaminated, the living entity, because he has a little independence, rebels. In this state, the mind dictates, Why should I serve Krishna? I am God. Thus one labors under a false impression, and his life is spoiled. We try to conquer many things, even empires, but if we fail to conquer the mind, we are failures, even if we manage to conquer an empire. Even though emperors, we will have within us our greatest enemy, our own mind. Jitatmana prashantasya paramatma samaditam shitoshna sukha dukkheshu tathamanapamannayo for one who has conquered the mind, the super soul is already reached, for he has attained tranquility. To such a man, happiness and distress, heat and cold, honor and dishonor are all the same. Bhagavad Gita 6.7 Actually, every living entity is intended to abide by the dictation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is seated in everyone's heart as Paramatma. When the mind is misled by the external illusory energy, one becomes entangled in material activities. Therefore, as soon as one's mind is controlled through one of the yoga systems, one is to be considered as having already reached the destination. One has to abide by superior dictation. When the mind is fixed on the supreme nature, he has no alternative but to follow the dictation of the supreme. The mind must admit some superior dictation and follow it. When the mind is controlled, one automatically follows the dictation of the Paramatma or the Super Soul. Because this transcendental position is at once achieved by one who is in Krishna consciousness, the devotee of the Lord is unaffected by the dualities of material existence, distress and happiness, cold and heat, etc. This state is called Samadhi or absorption in the Supreme. Jnana Vijnana Triptatmam Kutasto vijatendriya yukta iti uchayate yogi samalo strashma kanchana. A person is said to be established in self realization and is called a yogi or mystic when he is fully satisfied by virtue of acquired knowledge and realization. Such a person is situated in transcendence and is self controlled. He sees everything, whether it be pebbles, stones or gold, as the same. Bhagavad Gita 6.8 Book knowledge without realization of the Supreme Truth is useless. This is stated as follows. Ata Shri Krishna Namadi Nabhaved Grayam Idriya Sevan Mukhehi Jeevadav Svayam Evas Purati Ada No one can understand the transcendental nature of the name, form, quality and pastimes of Sri Krishna through his materially contaminated senses. Only when one becomes spiritually saturated by transcendental service to the Lord are the transcendental name, form, quality and pastimes of the Lord revealed to him. 
Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu 1.2.234 There are men in the modes of goodness, passion and ignorance and to reclaim all these conditioned souls there are 18 puranas six puranas are meant for those in the mode of goodness six for those in the mode of passion and six for those in the mode of ignorance the padma purana is written for those in the mode of goodness because there are many different types of men there are many different vedic rituals in the vedic literature there are descriptions of rituals and ceremonies in which a goat may be sacrificed in the presence of the goddess kali this is described in the markanda purana but this purana is meant for the instruction of those in the mode of ignorance it is very difficult for one to give up his attachments all at once if one is addicted to meat eating and is suddenly told that he must not eat meat he cannot do so if one is attached to drinking liquor and is suddenly told that liquor is no good he cannot accept this advice therefore in the puranas we find certain instructions that say in a sense all right if you want to eat meat just worship the goddess kali and sacrifice a goat for her only then can you eat meat you cannot eat meat just by purchasing it from the butcher shop no there must be sacrifice or restriction in order to sacrifice a goat to the goddess kali one must make arrangements for a certain date and utilize certain paraphernalia the type of puja or worship is allowed on the night of the dark moon which means once a month there are also certain mantras to be chanted when the goat is sacrificed the goat is told your life is being sacrificed before the goddess kali you will therefore be immediately promoted to the human form generally in order to attain the human form a living entity has to pass through many species of life on the evolutionary scale but if a goat is sacrificed to the goddess kali he is immediately promoted to the human form the mantra also says you have the right to kill this man who is sacrificing you the word mamsa indicates that in his next birth the goat will eat that flesh of the man who is presently sacrificing him this in itself should bring the goat eater to his senses he should consider why am i eating this flesh why am i doing this i'll have to repay with my own flesh in another life the whole idea is to discourage one from eating meat thus because there are different types of men there are 18 puranas to guide them the vedic literatures are meant to redeem all men not just a few it is not that those who are meat eaters or drunkards are rejected a doctor accepts all patients and he prescribes different medicines according to the disease it is not that he gives the same medicine for all the diseases or that he treats just one disease no he offers a specific type of medicine to whoever comes and the patient receives gradual treatment However the satric puranas like the padma purana are meant for those in the mode of goodness for those who are immediately capable of worshiping the supreme personality of godhead in the brahma samhita 5.1 it is stated ishvara parama krishna sachidananda vigraha the supreme controller is krishna who has an eternal blissful spiritual body this is the vedic pronouncement and we thus accept shri krishna as the supreme lord Those who are in the modes of passion and ignorance attempt to imagine the form of God and when they're confused they say oh there is no personal god god is impersonal or void this is just the result of frustration actually god has his form and why not according to the vedanta sutra janmadi asya yatha the supreme absolute truth is he from whom everything emanates It is easy to see that we have different types of bodies different types of forms we must consider where these forms are coming from where have these forms originated we have to use a little common sense if god is not a person how can his sons be persons if your father is just a void if he is not a person how can you be a person if your father has no form how can you have a form This is not very difficult. It is just a common question. 
Unfortunately, because people are frustrated, they try to imagine some form or they conclude that because this material form is temporary and troublesome, God must be formless. Indeed, because all forms in the material world must perish, God of necessity must be formless. The Brahma Samhita 5.1 specifically states that this conception is a mistake. Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchidan and the Vigra. God has a form, but his form is Satchidan and the Vigra. Sat means eternal and Chit means knowledge and Ananda means pleasure. God has form, but his form is eternal and is full of knowledge and pleasure. We cannot compare his form to our form. Our form is neither eternal, full of pleasure, nor full of knowledge. Therefore, God's form is different. As soon as we speak of form, we think that form must be like ours, and we therefore conclude that the eternal all-knowing and all-blissful God must be without form. This is not knowledge, but the result of imperfect speculation. According to the Padma Purana, Atar Shri Krishna Namadi, Nabhaved Grahyam Indriye, one cannot understand the form, name, quality or paraphernalia of God with one's material senses. Since our senses are imperfect, we cannot speculate on Him, who is supremely perfect. That is not possible. Then how is it possible to understand Him? Sevan Mukhehi Jivado By training and purifying our senses, we may come to understand and see God. Presently, we are attempting to understand God with impure, imperfect senses. It is like someone with cataracts trying to see. Just because one has cataracts, he should not conclude that there is nothing to be seen. Similarly, we cannot presently conceive of God's form. But once our cataracts are removed, we can see. According to the Brahma Samhita 5.38, Premanjana Charita Bhakti Vilochanena Hridayeshu Vilokayanti The devotees whose eyes are anointed with the ointment of love of God can see God within their hearts 24 hours a day. Purification of the senses is what is required. Then we can understand the name, form, qualities and pastimes of God. Then we'll be able to see God everywhere and everything. These matters are discussed thoroughly in the Vedic literatures. For instance, it is said that although God has no hands or legs, He can accept whatever we offer. Apani Pado Javanu Grita. It is also stated that although God has neither eyes nor ears, He can see and hear everything. These are apparent uh, contradictions, but they are meant to teach us an important lesson. When we speak of seeing, we think of material vision. Due to our material conception, we think that the eyes of God must be like ours. Therefore, in order to remove these material conceptions, the Vedic literatures say that God has no hands, legs, eyes, ears, etc. God has eyes, but His vision is infinite. He can see in darkness and He can see everywhere at once. Therefore, He has different eyes. Similarly, God has ears and can hear. He may be in His kingdom millions and millions of miles away, but He can hear us whispering because he is sitting within. We cannot avoid God seeing, hearing, or touching. Patram pushpam phalam toyam yo me bhaktya prayachati tad aham bhaktya upaharitam ashnami prayat atmanaha. If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit, or water, I will accept it. Bhagavad Gita 9.26. If God does not have senses, how can he accept and eat the offerings that are presented to him? According to ritual, we are offering Krishna food daily and we can see that the taste of this food is immediately changed. This is the practical example. God eats, but because he is full, he does not eat like us. If I offer you a plate of food, you will eat it and it will be finished. God is not hungry, but he eats and at the same time, he leaves the food as it is and thus it is transformed into prashad. His mercy. Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purnam Eva Vashishyate God is full, yet He accepts all the food that we offer. Still the food remains as it is. He can eat with His eyes, as stated in Brahma Samhita, Angani Yasya Sakalendriya Vritti Manti 
Every sense of the Lord's body has all the potencies of the other senses. Although we can see with our eyes, we cannot eat with our eyes. The senses of God, however, being infinite and different. Simply by looking at the food that is offered to him, he eats it. This may not be understood at the present moment. Therefore, the Padma Purana states that when one becomes spiritually saturated by rendering transcendental service to the Lord, the transcendental name, form, qualities and pastimes of the Lord are revealed. We cannot understand God by our own endeavor, but out of mercy, God reveals himself to us. If it is night and you want to see the sun, you will have to wait for the sun to appear in the morning. You cannot go outside with a big torch and say, come on, I will show you the sunlight. In the morning, when the sun rises of its own will, we can see it. Because our senses are imperfect, we cannot see God by our own endeavor. We have to purify our senses and wait for the time when God will be pleased to reveal himself to us. That is the process. We cannot challenge God. We cannot say, Oh my dear God, my dear Krishna, please come, I want to see you. No, God is not our order supplier. He is not our servant. When he is pleased, we will see him. Therefore, this Krishna consciousness is a is a process by which we can please God so that he will reveal himself to us. Because people cannot see God, they readily accept anyone who says I am God. Because people have no conception of God, they are eager to accept any rascal who comes along and proclaims himself to be God. People are fond of saying I am searching after the truth. But in order to search for the truth, we must know what the truth is. Otherwise, how can we search it out? If we want to purchase gold, we must at least theoretically know what gold is, otherwise we will be cheated. Consequently, having no conception of truth or of God, people are being cheated by so many rascals who say, I am God. In a society of rascals, one rascal accepts another rascal as God, and this is all the result of rascaldom. But all this has nothing to do with God. One has to qualify himself to see and understand God and that process of qualification is called Krishna Consciousness. Sevan Mukehi Jivado Swayam Evas Purati Adam By engaging ourselves in God's service, we become qualified to see God. Otherwise, it is not possible. We may be great scientists or scholars, but our mundane scholarship will not help us to see God. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, let's conclude here. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada Kijai.